High Reality Riffing, I got to sit down with the genius behind the Great Awakening map, Champ Prinya. He is a great yogi and meditator in the Dzogchen uh, path, and as well, he has been traversing the realms of consciousness through psychotropics and other means for many, many years when the a uh, great awakening map came to him as a download and then he started mapping it out and it's become very, very popular. Um, if you're not familiar with it, you have to get a copy of it. It will blow your mind. Um, it was like a meeting of a brother from another mother uh, being able to connect with Champ and just uh, really vibe with him was an incredible experience. And he has an amazing um kind of ascension map on Instagram called 5D Awakening Consciousness, but he's kind of in the background and doesn't uh, doesn't always um, show face for interviews, so it was really fun to get to sit down uh, with the man behind the 5D Awakening Consciousness. I hope you enjoy. so excited to be sitting down a meeting of the hearts and the minds with the great hyperdimensional artist Champ Perinha. Um, you may know him from I was I just found this out because it's a little a little secret, but um, 5D uh, Awakening Consciousness on Instagram, which is a huge Instagram feed that has incredible teachings as well as the Great Awakening map. Um, and uh, I would love to Champ. I would love to just jump right in and and talk about how you kind of became a hyperdimensional artist and what what uh, drew you or what was the awakening for you. I know that you're a Dzogchen uh, yogi and practitioner and would love to just hear your story of awakening. Thank you, Guru Jagat. It's an honor to meet you. And I'm really, really happy that we could discuss anything you want to today. Thank you. So, so happy to have you here. And um, if for those of you who don't, uh, who have not yet seen the Great Awakening map, um, we'll definitely, I think we'll put it up, uh, Champ, um, uh, for people to see it so they can th start to go inside this incredible um, channeled kind of transmission. But yeah, give us the story of how, what, 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 how, what, why, what, how did you kind of come here to this place of awakening for in, in yourself? Most people may know me from the Great Awakening map, and it is a one-page meme that I created in mid-2018. And it was my art project to put as many red pills and rabbit holes into one meme that would awaken humanity as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. And having been an artist and a graphic designer for over 12 years since finishing, um, finishing art school, um, this was sort of my project that was a combination of my art background and my spiritual awakening. Hmm. So this was my opportunity to finally create something that would affect the collective consciousness in a way that was very important to me at a time where people were starting to awaken and social media was being used around the world to host memes and share amazing information and secrets of humanity that nobody ever knew about. So UFOs, ETs, secret space programs, third eyes, all of those types of topics were starting to become very, very uh, prominent over social media. So I saw this happening and it was my, my cue to put in my own sort of con contribution to humanity at that time. 
And um, when, like, so this happened in 2018, but uh, before this, um, what was your journey in terms of your your kind of um, awakening, your personal awakening? When did that start to so kind of open up? I finished art school around 2007. I went to UC Irvine and I was living in Orange County still. And about a year had passed since graduation. It was around 2008. I was browsing YouTube, living at home as a freelance graphic designer. I had a lot of time to do anything I wanted to when, when you live at home. So I was on YouTube and I came across a black and white video and it had some title about the hexagon above the North Pole of Saturn. And I clicked on it and it was a video about this huge hyperdimensional hexagon that's on the North Pole of Saturn. And it's so large that you can fit 10 Earths within this hexagon. It's a hexagonal cloud pattern. And having been obsessed with space and sci-fi and Star Wars and Star Trek for my entire life, I was very, very disturbed that I had never seen something like this in our own solar system. Hmm. And even studying astronomy in college and in high school and you know the whole thing it just was so interesting that nobody's talking about this nobody knows how the physics are working that are involved with creating this perfectly hexagonal cloud pattern above saturn so i watched a video it was by richard hoagland he's really well known in the awakening community mm -hmm. um Richard Hoagland talked about this hexagon being a hyperdimensional, sacred geometrical type of thing, you know, inside Saturn. If you if you map out the secret geometry involved in rotating objects, then you'll get these sacred geometrical cloud patterns that are on mostly, you can see it on Saturn. You can also see it on other planets such as the Earth in Hawaii uh, on Mars in uh, Mount Olympus, the volcano, mm. you'll have these energy patterns that occur at 19.5 degrees. Mm. And every rotating object in our solar system conforms to these sacred, sacred geometrical patterns. So this was one rabbit hole that led me down the path of spiritual awakening. And it just happened to be this one YouTube video that changed my life. And from there, I branched out and I started researching other researchers such as Dolores Cannon and, and David Wilcock, for example, mm -hmm. Nassim Haramine. I know a lot of your listeners will know these names. So these are the people who helped me learn about consciousness and meditation and the third eye and all of these different forms of healing and awakening. And 10 years flew by and it was my time in mid 2018. I said, I need to put all of this knowledge that I've gained since then I need to do something with it. I need to help humanity. I need to share everything that's in my mind. So the Great Awakening Map was one avenue that I, I used to create uh, information that would share in the form of a meme. <laughs> I love it. And uh, um, I mean, I think that the thing that is fascinating um, and especially we've more people I th are, are aware of this in 2020 now than ever before. But this is an example of how I feel like the kind of enlightened um, uh, hypersynchronicity of technology actually can be um, a real kind of space where we can use the technology to um, open up different um, pathways of all sorts of community, of, of knowledge, of experience, and all these things. Um, and I think that there's a lot of dystopian, especially with the five, the five G and the um, the AI, and and a lot of fear around all of that. But I think it is kind of um, beautiful to remember that uh, the the technology can be used, and and oftentimes, like your story, is a place on YouTube um, that you know something was awakened that has now led you on a path of Dharma and destiny. So it's 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 um, it's very powerful this way. Definitely. The, uh, 
spiritual awakened people always say there's no such thing as good or bad. There's only what we want or what we don't want. So I always think of that in terms of technology as well. And the way we use tools on our planet is going to affect us consciously. So if we use the tool of the internet and information in, in a positive way, overall, it's going to lead to a more telepathic civilization where information is instantaneous and it can also be instantaneous in a healthy way. Right, right. I mean, this is um, this is something I was just discussing with Barbara Henklau, who wrote that book, The Pleiadian Agenda. Um, and, you know, a lot of that came through her. She doesn't even really she necessarily, she says she doesn't even, you know, know. She has to reread it to really kind of remember what was said. But part of what the Pleiadian um, Council channeled through her was that the, that in the future, which the Pleiades is, you know, we could call in the future, the, the, that civilization, um, the techno this whole phase of technology was basically um, just a time for us to awaken to our own inherent abilities to um, kite and, and do ESP and just the massive kind of psychic um, fiber optics that our own neural uh, pathways are um, and that that is really the true like interweb um, and the interconnectedness. So I, I think that that's very fascinating in terms of our evolution. Definitely. I mean, on my, on my Great Awakening map, you'll see things such as psychic healing and astral traveling and lucid dreaming. And these are sort of ways that people can start to explore the higher dimensional realms of consciousness. And in these realms, telepathy is very common. Yeah. And even with remote viewing or uh, astral projection, telepathy seems to be a very basic mode of being, how the interconnectedness of your consciousness is always, has always been connected to other beings and other locations. But when we're in the human body, we forget this. And if someone isn't able to have these type of experiences in this lifetime, then it's going to make their spiritual awakening a little bit more challenging because they're a little bit more disconnected. So with these types of discussions and when people see the Great Awakening map, my, my goal is to sort of plant that seed within them so that hopefully one day they will experience these uh, things or at least awaken to them so it's in their consciousness. And that, that's how it works. I mean, basically, these things, it could take lifetimes for people to, um, to uh, maybe have the energy or the frequency to be able to unpack what we would call a terma in, in Buddhism or a, a, a mind um, treasure, you know. Mind treasure, yes. <laughs> um, but so, you know, it could take lifetimes, but I think that's all accelerating. So a lot of people, you know, if if they're raising their vibration on a kind of on the daily in a, in a, um, in a way that is is powerful for them, then th I think this is happening in a much more accelerated way where we're able to kind of take all of the things that we've accumulated in terms of um, uh, wisdoms over these lifetimes and apply them. And of course, you know, a lot of people aren't having that experience, but I do feel that there's a huge kind of um, part of the timeline that is that, that, that um, humans are experiencing that. So one of the most interesting things about my Instagram account is that I have hundreds and thousands of people messaging me from around the world with strange ascension symptoms. And a lot of these messages may deal with like ET encounters in their dream state, yeah. or maybe they'll encounter some sort of being in another type of state. And it's interesting because these people, they've just found my Instagram and they have never had any background with, with higher dimensional beings. So I'm thinking all these people around the world are awakening through direct contact or through dream states. And even for myself, I don't really get those types of contacts in my dream state. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to help these people around the world who are having these amazing experiences. And it just goes to show that the awakening is happening in such 
mysterious ways to people who aren't even who aren't even studied in this type of background yeah. and they're looking for answers and social media is helping them connect to other people who are able to show them the path that their higher self is most likely leading them on and i want to i want to talk to you about about the you know what's happening in the in the social media space um but before we go there I, I'm <laughs> I'm curious, you know, I know that you are a Zochen practitioner, um, wondering how that came, where that came in the, the path and what, you know, kind of what, what experiences you are having in terms of um, your, your kind of um, lotus blossoming mind and, and your kind of experience of your, your own consciousness awakening, uh, curious, whatever you'd like to share with us. Yes. Dzogchen didn't find me in my life until I watched David Wilcox's lectures. And David Wilcox talked about the Tibetan rainbow body. And the rainbow body is when an ascended or enlightened monk is able to transfigure their entire body into pure rainbow light at the moment of death. And this is considered the ultimate spiritual goal for a Dharma practitioner or for any human being in general. So David Wilcock made this video about maybe, I'd say, seven years ago. And since that moment, it had always fascinated me the most of anything I had researched since that time of my awakening back in 2008. So fast forward back maybe three and a half years, I had met two Dzogchen Lamas who live in California. Their names are Lama Daniela and Lama Christopher. So these are my two group gurus. Hmm. And they studied from Lama Surya Das, who was very well known in America. So I went to see my two lamas for the first time. It was like a meeting in Costa Mesa or something. There was a meditation day and I, I met them. I sat through the first hour with them and I was so surprised at what Dzogchen was. Because in my mind I had I had envisioned it being something that involved chanting and mantra and action mm, and mm -hmm, effort. Mm -hmm. And I was coming into it having meditated for maybe about 10 years already. But these were sort of like varied meditation techniques. You know, the whole gamut of, of new age meditation, all sorts of types of styles. And right. it didn't really occur to me what Dharma was at that time. So about two years ago, I decided to move to Thailand and change my entire life. I wanted to pursue the path of a Dzogchen yogi. And I had, I had studied and learned from them enough that I could live on my own in meditation retreat. And I had read enough um, profound readings of Dzogchen that I felt that I was ready to just live in meditation retreat and do this for the rest of my life as, as a true Dharma practitioner. So that's how I came to Dzogchen, and that's how I fell in love with Dzogchen. And it was, um, I like to say, I found Buddhism through the back door. Mm -hmm. And that was through psychedelics and through learning about the rainbow body. And I had had very profound psychedelic experiences uh, many years prior, mm -hmm. which showed me hyperdimensional realms filled with Vajrayana imagery and deities and Buddhas and temples. And I had never studied Buddhism as a child, but my ethnicity is Thai. So yeah. in a Thai culture, Buddhism is prevalent. Yeah. So there must be some sort of past life connection to that or why I was seeing temp Indian temples, Chinese temples, Tibetan temples. My psychedelic visions were very, very profound and very, very precise. I would see texts and texts of Tibetan writing and Chinese writing, but I've never ever studied these languages, including Sanskrit and, and Hindi. So these psychedelic visions were what really drew me to Buddhism and to Dzogchen because I knew there was something there hyperdimensionally and, and in terms of my past life that was so important that I had to pursue it in this life. There was no other reason for, for being. This was my true calling and I'm very glad that on the Great Awakening map, I put 
Dzogchen and the Rainbow Body in the very top right corner. Yeah. Right next to Return to Source. So these teachings are what I like to call the highest teachings of the Great Awakening Map. This is what will lead you to pure light body activation in one lifetime. And if anybody is curious on that path, it's there for you. But they have to seek it out themselves. And are you there with your root gurus or your your, your gurus or who, where are you by yourself? Like, are you in a monastery? I live in a personal meditation retreat home in, in and around Thailand. Mm -hmm. But Lama Daniela and Lama Christopher, they live in L.A. Mm -hmm. They still teach Dzogchen in Orange County. So if anybody is interested in having uh, meditation with them, they're always open to it. Or others may, who live in New York, they may want to meditate with Lama Surya Das. So it's all the same family. And do you, um, are there, are you studying with high lamas there? I'm only living in meditation retreat alone. Okay. And I have no contact with my lamas other than through video chats um, every month or so. But living in meditation retreat as a Dzogchen yogi, um, I have learned enough at this time of my life where I can literally uh, live in retreat like this for two to three years. But I also travel around Thailand at this time. So wherever I go, I'm always trying to practice the continuity of a non-dual mind. It's sort of a, a practice that you are not doing just sitting, but also off the cushion, off the mat, yeah. in and around daily life. It's constantly your practice. Yeah. And as, as a Dzogchen yogi, the practice never leaves you. The meditation retreat is with you wherever I go. And one of my favorite practices is walking around Bangkok and exploring every day on foot by myself and trying to remain in that non-dual state of mind that Dzogchen teaches us how to, how to recognize and to practice. And do you consider, um, it, like, is Chatro Rinpoche uh, a kind of a high lama in, in your um, uh, sect of Dzogchen? Yes, he is uh, Vajrayana. Yeah. So I know of his works and his teachings, and there's many, many amazing monks and lamas in this uh, in the Vajrayana yeah. and Mahayana as well. Yeah. So I've read his teachings many times, but I've never been able to meet any of these monks because I've never traveled to India yeah. or Tibet. But it's on my list of to dos when the country starts to open up. Hopefully yeah. this year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, fascinating. I love, I just love, you know, I'm always, um, just in awe of the awakening. It's such a beautiful, I love to hear the story and especially, um, when the wake, when these awakenings, cause it's always, it's a, it's a lotus petal or a lotus flower. So it's all, you know, it's a continual process, but, um, just the, the, the art that came through you um is this something that's continuing like are you continuing to allow different kind of um, mind maps and things to come through or was is that that the, like the great work and now you've moved on to something else the great awakening nap sort of stands alone as itself there's no explanation written for it people are supposed to come to it with their own conclusions. I want them to explore the topics on their own, find these rabbit holes on their own, and their path of awakening will always be different than mine. It, most of the time, it's very similar, actually, but everyone's path will be different, and everybody's end destination will be different. But I, I'm i constantly making memes and, and new diagrams and maps, and I post them on my Instagram. So if anybody ever wants to see the type of things I produce, they can visit greatawakeningmap.co and my Instagram is 5D Awakening Consciousness. And from those two places, they'll be able to see and read everything that we're talking about today. I think you've done a very, I mean, like I said, I didn't know that 5D Awakening Consciousness was yours. And so it's, 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 a bit, you know, you're, 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 you're good at creating, um, some, you know, a way to transmit these teachings without, uh, you know, um, without 
uh, uh, making it, you know, you never see your face or anything, although I'm so happy to see your face now. Um, but it's, you know, I think it's, it's powerful because it's, you're definitely kind of giving a, 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 a certain type of frequency and projection through the teachings that you're putting on there. I was also being as a contemporary artist in Los Angeles when I used to live there. And the artworks I was showing were hyperdimensional landscapes, these visionary scenes that I would, I would encounter mm. on psychedelic journeys. And I created these landscapes as abstract uh, photos. So when I released them to the art world, it had a very ty different type of reception, and, it, and a lot of not a lot of people were had understood what the hyperspace even was at that time. So, when I made my Instagram, I started to realize that this was a better route for me to share information that I had gained. It was quicker, and more people were able to understand uh, right. the types of topics I wanted to talk about because there's just so many topics, as you can see from everything I post on my Instagram and the Great Awakening map, I was trying to cram all of this into my, my art career with just abstract photos, but it wasn't enough. So I had to change my way of sharing information in a way that was much quicker and much more profound, I guess you could say. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. Um, and are you still like what? What's your what's your relationship to psychedelics now? Um, are you using them the first spiritual practice, or was that just a phase? I think about five years ago was was when it was at its peak, mm -hmm. and that's also when I had discovered DMT, and I was also doing five gram shroom journeys in meditative darkness. So I had done these <laughs> intense. <laughs> Yes, all the way. <laughs> I had I had gone as far as I needed to go. And after the DMT experiences, that's when my entire art career unfolded. Hmm. And after exhibiting in LA and, and having that lifestyle for about five years, after that I came to Thailand and I had already dedicated myself to studying Dzogchen. So having to go back to psychedelic journeys is not something that my mind craves anymore and about a year and a half ago I had kept some mushrooms with me and when I brought them to Thailand and then when I took that five gram journey it was much different than it was when I was back living in Los Angeles so it was more of a challenging journey that that last trip I took so I realized that I had gleaned enough information yeah experiences from those states that I would be able to probably be a Dzogchen yogi and be happy without needing to visit those teachers for a long time. Mm. And do you, what's your kind of uh, thought about the, the meditative practice uh, secreting, creating the, the secretion of your own natural DMT through the meditation? That's exactly another reason why I feel that this practice alone is enough for what I need in my life spiritually yeah. and in terms of following the Dharma. So it took care of itself. The psychedelic yeah. graduated when I needed it to graduate. And I'll visit it again one day, but in smaller doses. <laughs> and for now, my Dzogchen awareness practice is, is everything that I need. And I, it's, it's very dear and near to me at all times. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Um, okay, so I now want to get into some nitty gritty stuff. So, um, you know, we're calling this a red pill. We, the, uh, the Great Awakening map has all of it's a it's a kind of mind map of the red pill. Uh, what how uh, what's your relationship with? what that kind of has become and, and um, some of the, you know, the recently in the wellness industry, there's been kind of a, a huge attack on um, people who are kind of looking um, at the perspective of what's happening both with um, this pandemic and some of the other things politically and exo, you know, in, in other aspects and other realms. Um, we've come under attack. And I'm just curious what you're, if you're, you know, aware 
aware of it? Have you have had people kind of, has it been something in your experience in terms of um, this, uh, this movement that's happening in the wellness industry? So my, my Instagram was shadow banned for a long time. It's been shadow banned for over two years. Yeah. And Instagram even disabled my account for, I think, four or five days uh, last month. And thousands of other accounts were disabled during that same time. Yeah. And this all has to do with COVID and, and politics and anybody who tries to post anything about these, these topics. Their accounts would get um, shadow banned. And my Patreon was taken down and they had... They gave me no reason for that. So um, I've had my share of attacks from the deep state. Yeah. And this doesn't bother me because the close people who I follow, their accounts were also taken down. Yeah. So it's sort of like we're all in this together. And you must have been speaking really real truth if your account was shadow banned. Yeah. So these things affect me, but I'm able to see past it because I know that any negative thing that the deep state does is just going to come back to them. The more that they censor us, the more our information is going to become well-known and accepted. Yeah. So this is something that's considered divine justice. And we just have to let the, the river of karma take care of those who want to censor us. And we should always keep posting memes and awakening humanity as much as possible each day because there's no stopping the great awakening and there's no stopping our consciousness from expanding it is our birthright of our entire planet thank you so much for that perspective because i think it's very easy to get into um combi- uh, it basically meet the 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 vibration of againstness or um that we're in a you know we're kind of in this some sort of um not that we're not in some sort of frequency battle, uh, but I think it's easy to get sucked into a lower frequency of, you know, we're battling and we're, we're at war. And I mean, just certain kind of ideas about that, um, I think, are definitely running through um, some of the, and, and, and it's reasonable because it, it's painful as, uh, you know, we're, we're, all of our accounts are majorly shadow banned and um, every, all of my likes and all of my, all of my, um, you know, everything's always pulled down and, you know, um, suppressed and, and either at the start or if it looks like it's going to, so we've, we've had that like you for years now. And, um, and I think, you know, people, especially if they're under a major attack, it's, it's easy to get upset because you're trying to, you know, do put, get the message out and, and do the work that, that you feel that you need to do. Um, what do you, do you think that there's anything to be done? Like, do we go to different platforms? I mean, a lot of people are moving to these other platforms. What's your opinion? My opinion is to keep using the big platforms because you're getting the most followers and the most, uh, view counts this way. And also use the smaller new, um, platforms as well, but Keep using Instagram, Twitter, Facebook as much as you can and always have a backup or two. But don't have any fear. Post, but be a little bit careful. And hopefully when the election is finalized in a month or two, I think things will get a little bit better. But just keep posting and don't hold back because this is why you were born. We were born for this time to help awaken the planet as fast as possible. So there's millions of others doing the same thing as you and mil- millions of us are having our accounts um, censored. So just, just keep going. Everything will be okay. <laughs> um, a positive, a positive message. I, I really appreciate it. Cause I think this is definitely a theme right now. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm talking to a lot of people who are feeling um, frustrated or, or inspired, you know, I think it's also forced many freedom fighters to kind of go to, um, you know, think about how to be a little bit more, um, creative and, and, and create, um, you know, platforms where they at least can, um, not be as censored as much and all this kind of stuff. But I mean, this is a, it's an odd time. I, I've, I've heard some really weird things about people like, um, 
on Zoom, Zoom just turns off, you know, somebody speaking and Zoom just turns off their microphone and you can't hear them anymore and just we, like crazy stuff like that. So these things may occur, but just keep on going because there's a reason for everything and everything will work itself out. Definitely. Yeah. Amazing. Well, we have, I mean, I feel that there's a very big window happening right now of um, a lot of a lot of awakening and I'm just would love to just you know whatever message um, that you would like to give to humanity in this this window of um, both the celestial occurrence that's happening um, on uh, this winter solstice but also just in this time you know any other th um, messages that you have that you'd like to relay Yes, thank you. Every day, we should remember that our inner peace is what's going to create world peace. And world peace creates cosmic peace. There are thousands of extraterrestrial groups surrounding our Earth right now, and they're waiting for us to make that next small leap in consciousness that will allow them to come and visit us and bring cosmic peace to our planet. But if everybody is in fear and worried and complaining, this low vibration is never going to create the inner peace that's necessary to boost our collective consciousness into 4D, 5D civilization. Mm -hmm. So everybody should practice meditation. And if meditation is too big of a word for them, maybe just remembering to feel peace at all times no matter what is occurring in our lives because the illusion of reality that dharma teaches us is that everything that we see is happening within our minds the thoughts and the feelings are just mind imaginings so if we can remember that we are in total control of how we feel at all times it will make us more awakened to the fact that we can choose peace at all times and then this higher vibrational state of peace will transcend throughout all the, the activities that we do in our life. And it will attract amazing people and amazing doorways for us to walk through. So the high vibration that we cultivate, inner, inner peace, this will eventually take care of everything in your life. Thank you so much. And thank you for your uh, exquisite Dharma practice and, and the uh, vibration that you're carrying and you're holding and you're, you're uh, projecting out into the collective consciousness. It's just, it's an honor to be with you here on the planet right now um, and all the other dimensions that we're meeting in. And um, thank you for your service to humanity. Thank you so much, Guru Jagat. It was, it's been an honor to finally meet you and hopefully we will see each other in the hyperdimensional realms i i i know we will i just I'm, I'm setting eyes on you for the first time i was like i know you um so thank you very much and just to remind everyone and we'll have all of your information please um get one of these uh, great awakening maps for yourself and um for friends we have them here at rama um they they really are uh, it's something i would call a traticum where it's a it, it's a it's like a microchip and you install it into your third eye by looking at it and then it yes. oh, it opens up um, consciousness. I mean, it is very profound um, consciousness tool. And then as well as um, your amazing, your amazing teachings that are coming through um, the, your Instagram. So we'll, we'll link all of that so people can um, learn more from you. Do you have a great awakening map in your studio? Yeah, we have, we have, we what have them here. We just have, it's just on like white uh, or nice. cream. <laughs> it's on cream. Yeah. Very nice. But we have a big one. We have a very big well, one. Yeah. Please send me a photo. I want to see it. Okay. I will. I will. And um, I'd like to do a bigger one actually. Um, but we have it right by the, you know, where people walk in so that they can look at it and get the transmission. Amazing. If anybody wants to see the Great Awakening Map, just visit greatawakeningmap.co and they'll find my shop and everything else that I have talked about today. 
Thank you so much and bless you and uh, see you in the dimensions soon. Thank you so much, Guru Jagat. Sadnam. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of Reality Riffing. These are conversations that I think are important with people who are doing great things in the world about subject matters that need to be discussed. If you enjoyed the content, the conversation, please feel free to share with your people, share with your friends and family, rate the podcast below, and also subscribe. me makes me like